Hi, I'm Jonas, and in this box is the probably most anticipated micro helicopter of 2022, the OMP Hobby M2 Evo. So let's open the box, see what's inside, and see what you get with your helicopter. Then also draw a little comparison to the V2. Let's also take a look at my setup, the radio that comes with the ready to fly kit, and then let's see a flight. So the M2 Evo comes in a beautiful EPP molded box. This box is really essential to the protection of the helicopter. You can drop it down a staircase and it will not break. So the first thing when you open the box is that you will see the helicopter well protected in a perfectly helicopter shaped cutout in here. You will also see a little pocket for tools and accessories, a longer cutout for some spare parts and up here some cutouts for additional batteries take the helicopter out of the case. We're gonna take a closer look at the helicopter in a second, but you will notice that it comes with a blade caddy for transportation if you do not want to use the case. And if you remove the canopy, just like that, you will also see that the helicopter comes with a battery pre-installed. This is a new battery, 3S750 milliamp hours. It provides longer flight times than on the V2 and it fits the Evo perfectly from a current standpoint, from a weight standpoint. It's just a really good match. Putting the helicopter aside, let's take a look what you also get. First off is this little baggie of spare parts, which will cover your first soft crash probably entirely, as it contains a spindle shaft, servo arms, some zip ties, a main shaft, and some pre-loctite screws, so you can just get wrenching in the field and swap these parts out easily. Up here, in this little pocket, we have a flight controller manual. This tells you how to set up your flight controller. It's the same as on the M2 V2 and M2 Explore. So if you're familiar with those, you can just use the same procedures. Additionally, the helicopter comes with a swash leveling tool. For that, I'm just gonna put the box aside again and get the helicopter back. The swash leveling tool is a three leg tool mine has already been opened that's why it's not in a sealed bag anymore and this tool will essentially fit on the main shaft and allow you to have a reference to bump your swash up against for leveling you just take off the rotor hand plop the tool on instead put the screw through and can level your swash that way so that covers what's in the box so let's take a look at the helicopter itself here's the object of interest the m2 evo the M2 Evo features a new beautiful canopy design, which comes in this yellow. It also comes in orange, red, and white. So pick your favorite color. There will be something for everyone, essentially. The canopy is not the only design element, though. We also have color-coordinated parts like the main rotor blades, the main motor, carbon fiber frame is printed, skids are printed, the tail boom has colored accents, even on the tail, we have the alu bracket, which is colored. We have a printed tail fin, and even the tail motor is anodized in the color of the canopy. So overall, a very nice design concept, which takes the canopy design and applies it across the entire helicopter. Taking off the canopy, we can show you some more features. For example, the new mainframe style with a clamping battery mount instead of a battery tray so you can just pull out the battery just like that and reinsert it just like that no trace needed it's just a very solid concept now right above the battery you will find the ESC and flight controller stack also called the flight stack which houses the ESCs for both motors the main motor and the tail motor as well as the flight controller controlling your servos and your rotor head it comes with the OMP receiver built in but also has ports for DSM and ESPO satellites, as well as the ability to program your flight controller easily at the field without any additional measures through these blinking lights. Same procedure as on the V2, essentially. You will also notice that the M2 Evo now comes with polymer case servos. These servos have the same internals as the aluminum case servos seen on the M2 V2 but they are made with a carbon fiber reinforced polymer case, which essentially has no disadvantages over the aluminum frame. It has excellent durability. It has no performance trade-offs because it's a very stiff case. 
and it's even one gram lighter than the aluminum servos and way cheaper to make. So we are able to offer this helicopter at a reduced price point for everyone to be affordable. So let's come to the part many of you have asked about, comparing the M2 EVO to the M2 V2. These helicopters might look similar at first, but under the hood we made a ton of changes which improves the way the EVO flies over the V2 in several ways. So besides the design, let's go over what makes the EVO different from the V2. First thing, and probably the most important change, is the blade length. While the M2 V2 had a blade length from the bolt hole to the tip of 173 millimeters, we have increased that length on the EVO to 190 millimeters. While the V2 had a rotor diameter of 400 millimeters, the EVO has a rotor diameter of 434 millimeters. This gives the M2 EVO a larger rotor disc area, lowering the disc loading, lowering the blade loading, and generally improving the controls and handling characteristics of the EVO, improving the efficiency and making it fly better overall. The rotor blades are attached to the rotor head, where you might see the next difference. The M2 V2 had a DFC style rotor head, where the linkages would at the same time constrain the upper swash plate to the rotation of the main rotor. On the M2 EVO, we have switched this design to a fiberless design, which means we have a ball joint at the top and at the bottom of the linkage, and use the swash blade driver arms to constrain the upper swash to the rotor movement. This is a very slop-free design. It is very stiff. It uses double ball bearings per arm. This change in rotor head design allows us to circumvent some resonant frequencies of the old rotor head, which would have the V2 and Explorer go into some certain resonant frequencies at certain head speeds, making the helicopter wobble back and forth. The EVO now can be flown at any head speed without any concerns, since the rotor head is now freely teetering around the spindle center instead of having to flap out in the blade. Looking at the tail section of the helicopters, you can see that we increased the tail rotor diameter to 89 millimeters from the 72 millimeter tail rotor on the V2. This makes the tail much quieter to operate, gives it more thrust producing capabilities, makes it more efficient and generally it just works better. This change is accompanied by a larger tail motor to appropriately drive the larger tail blade as compared to the R113 and if you plan to upgrade you should always change these together. Looking at the other side of the tail section we can see that on the EVO we have a new printed carbon fiber fin versus the plain carbon fiber fin on the V2 as well as the new printed boom with colored accents where it was just a black boom with white writing on the V2. Taking the canopies off the helicopters, we can spot even more differences. While the M2 V2 had a split design carbon frame, where here in the back we had a little alu connector between the lower and the upper frame, on the EVO we now have a beautifully bent carbon piece, which eliminates some parts, increases stiffness, and overall just looks better. You can also see that the frame is silkscreen printed now, matching it to the canopy color in the back here as well in the front with M2 EVO, where we come to the next difference, the battery bay. While the battery bay on the V2 had this little latch to release a battery tray to which the battery was secured, we now have a simple friction fit for which you only need one hand to change the battery essentially. You can just pull it out, place it back in, it hits a stop at the back so it does not hit the motor and you're all good to go. Further improvements on the frame consist of a continuous aluminum backbone from the tail clamp all the way forward to the motor, which allows for a more rigid frame design and a easier tail boom clamp, which can be adjusted with just one screw, can slide in and out to adjust your center of gravity for different batteries. So you're now probably wondering, how do these two compare in flight? So from my experience with the M2 EVO and V2, I can say that the EVO flies more lightweight than the V2 due to the lower disc loading. You can run way lower RPMs. Um, my main 3D RPM with the V2 was 5600. It's gone down to 5000 on the EVO. It can run lower RPMs in general. The flight times have consistently gotten longer for me. Where the V2 flew for 2 minutes 30 to 3 minutes in hard 3D, the EVO now gets consistently 3 minutes to 3 minutes 30. In endurance hovering, the V2 would get about 11 minutes, where the EVO gets 14 minutes. 
The sound signature of the helicopters has changed completely. The Evo is much quieter than the V2. The tail is not the dominating noise in flight anymore. The main blades are quieter, the tail is quieter. The entire thing is more pleasant to fly. You can check out my flight videos for reference on this. Otherwise, the control feel is much the same. The blades have gotten a little slower on cyclic, which makes the entire thing more stable, more predictable to fly and easier to control in boundary cases like high-speed hurricanes at full collective where you snap the cyclic forward. And one thing that is very important to me, auto rotation characteristics. The Evo auto rotates like an absolute dream. It's not even a comparison to the V2. While the V2 auto-rotated with a glide path, something like a space shuttle coming in, basically one to brick, uh, the Evo can actually glide. It has some hang time at the bottom and it is very pleasant to auto-rotate. So let's answer some frequently asked questions about the M2 Evo. First off, can I upgrade my V2? The answer is yes, you can because many of the interfaces on the helicopter are compatible. The new main rotor blades will fit the old rotor head because the blade grips are the same and the root sizes are the same. So you can run these blades on the old helicopters without much change, you just need to readjust your flyboardless. The new tail for the quieter operation you can also fit onto the M2 V2. You can bolt the motor directly to the old interface because the alu bracket and the fin have not changed in their whole pattern. And you can also fit the new tail boom on the old helicopters because the cross section has not changed. The only thing that has changed is that there is no vertical hole in the boom anymore, so you probably need to drive the screw into it or drill a hole beforehand. The new canopies also fit the old helicopters because the mold has not changed. Where it gets a bit tricky is upgrading the main rotor head for the wobble-free flight characteristics. The new main rotor must be upgraded in conjunction with the new main motor because the motor has a new interface for the main shaft and the new main shaft is longer by five millimeters. So you will want to upgrade these together. Let's look at the frame real quick. Upgrading the frame requires a couple more parts because you need to change the aluminum backbone as well as the carbon parts and the entire battery fastening mechanism down here with these two rubber rings all in conjunction. What has remained the same are the canopy mounting posts, the upper frame aluminum part, the fiberless mount and this cross brace. You can also use old M2 V2 skids on the Evo because the skid mold has not changed. While we're here without the canopy, we can answer another question, what batteries fit? It's starting to rain, but I have an umbrella, so we're good. The first question about the battery I always get is what are its dimensions? So let's take them live. We have a length of 58 millimeters. We have a width of 24.6 and we have a height, which is the important constraint for the frame of 23.3. So if you want to find batteries that fit into the battery bay, you need batteries that are about 23 to 24 millimeters tall. The question that always goes along with this is, will my old batteries fit? And the answer to this is yes. All you need to do is take off the Velcro strap, take off the tray, take the helicopter, make sure the Velcro portion is facing down, align it against the upper face, and then you will want to push it in. It's a bit harder because the battery is taller with the Velcro on it, but once it's in, it's held as securely. You can plug it in, you can fly it. Taking it out, just pull and it's out again. If you do not plan to fly your V2 anymore, you can also take off this Velcro and it will make the battery fit just a bit nicer. Now that we have taken a look at the helicopter itself, let's talk about transmitters and setups. First off, this is the RadioMaster Zorro. This is the new ready-to-fly transmitter, the M2 Evo, and also the M1 Evo will come with. It is a beautiful piece of kit. The Zorro is a game controller style radio, which fits very well in the hands. It's very ergonomic, offers a full complement of controls with three position switches, two position switches, sliders, buttons, buttons in the back and I've been using this radio to fly this helicopter and the M1 Evo and all I can say is it's become my main radio basically. It is really easy to set up with the big screen. 
It runs HTX by default, so it can run my setup and it can do all the things I want, including deadband mitigation, custom rescue setup, different RPMs. My setup for the Radio Master Zorro, as well as the Radio Master TX16S, which is still a very popular radio, will be available from OMP directly link in the description with specifications of what receivers to use them with. If you want my flavorless setup to go along with it, I'm just showing the numbers on screen right now. You can copy these, punch them into your flavorless and your helicopter will fly just like mine. And with all that said, I will leave you with a flight video from this weekend. Enjoy your M2 Evo and see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>